And as a bird lands by to try and grab it or a lizard runs over, bushka, just like that. <laughs> Couldn't have timed that any better. This is the Venom Diaries, where we milk Australia's deadliest snakes for their venom to create anti-venom that saves over 300 lives every single year. Alrighty everyone, welcome back to Venom Diaries, episode number three. Today is all things exotic. So obviously we have a massive native highly venomous collection for our venom program, but we also keep here at the Australian Top Park a stack of exotic venomous snakes, in particular four, right? King Cobras, Rattlesnakes, Eyelash Vipers, and Cantors, and we're gonna have a look at them today. I've just been servicing our big female King Cobra. I'm actually getting her ready into this smaller type enclosure for cooling, which will be a little bit later in the year, because I'm hoping to pair her with our big male on display. And we'll put her back in here, we'll put a stack of bamboo leafer in there, and she'll make like a literally like a crocodile nest uh, and lay her eggs in there. But anyway, this room here, we are in the old Venom program. At the moment, I'm transforming it into our exotic room. Um, so it's mainly snakes, except for this fella right here. He's one of our green iguanas. Um, and he's doing a bit of conditioning with handling. He's a little bit naughty. He loves the girls, but he doesn't like the boys. So uh, normally when I open that enclosure, he just tail whips me on the face and tries to bite me, but he'll jump straight on the girls' shoulders and, and get kisses. So um, yeah, he's a cheeky fella. Yeah, so we're transforming this from our, uh, our native venom collection into our exotic. So there's a fair bit going on. Sorry, it looks a bit untidy. You'll notice there's paper across some of those enclosures. They're the rattlesnakes. And the reason why I put paper against them, if I don't have paper on there and I walk past them every single day, you know, a few times a day, they just stop rattling. Obviously we want them rattle so you can, we can show you guys at home and down in the show pit when we take them down there for reptile shows, the rattle. Because uh, what's the point of showing someone a rattlesnake if it doesn't rattle? Also up here, we have our anti-venom fridge for our exotic. So legally we have to carry our own anti-venom um, for any of the exotic venomous snakes we keep. So you can see, like, that alone from the there is all King Cobra. So um, I did touch base on this in last episode. You know, an Eastern Brown Bite, I'd get one vial of antivenom would probably sort me out. Maybe two, worst case scenario. If I got bitten by this big female I'm about to get out, I'd be getting every bit of 50 to 60 vials of antivenom to save my life. So anyway, enough of that. Let's get a snake out. Um, it's the big female. She's super defensive. She's quite a character. We imported her um, from overseas about 18, oh, come on, I've got this. About 18 months ago. Ooh, she's a big, big bit of gear. And uh, Hood is in full action. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So King Cobras are, oh, listen to her, they growl. They're the biggest venomous snake on the planet um, with the biggest one ever recorded at 5.7 meters. All right, so that is a huge, even as a python, that's a big snake. See how focused she is? So Chloe's behind the camera at the moment. <laughs> and, um, she's our, our content person. She's not nor normally used to uh, approaching venomous snakes, but she does a lot of filming with me and she's always around them. Um, but yeah, so you can see the hood, right? So, ooh. What that is, is that is basically a bit of stretchy skin um, with ribs that are quite flexible and it enables her to flatten that skin out and look bigger and be super intimidating. Okay, so you've got to imagine king cobras are found from Indonesia right up to China. All right, so they've got a massive distribution. They break up into a few species now, actually, they just split them. Um, but they got to share jungles with some pretty big and dangerous animals. I'm talking like tigers, elephants, and even large monitor lizards. So um, they are like this so they can sort of bluff their way out of potentially dangerous encounters. Obviously an elephant doesn't want to eat a snake, but a male Asian elephant can be literally five ton in weight, bigger. She doesn't want to get stood on that thing, so you need to let them know, hey, don't come near me, I'm dangerous. And they reckon the bite from one of these can actually kill a full-grown elephant. Um, and then, you know, you're looking at tigers, obviously. <laughs> They're a huge predator, massive cat, um, and she doesn't want to um, become dinner to one of them. Now, they're not actually responsible for that many fatalities each year. You really got to muck with these snakes to get bitten by them, like hurt them, provoke them, try and kill them. But 
yeah, extremely uninclined to bite, as you can see. She's just holding her ground, super confident. But the bites, they are bad, all right? And unfortunately, most people that get bitten by these snakes end up dead. You're just going to cardiac arrest and, um, you know, without antivenom. These are developing tropical countries where the majority of the bites happen. People can't afford the antivenom and uh, they have, uh, yeah, a terrible, terrible death. And the death, ooh, the deaths can be quite fast too. You know, I've heard of um, bite to death in like 20 minutes with this species. So I'm going to get her away. I'm not going to muck around. Oh, look at that. She's getting real confident. Now, <laughs> she's just pushing me into the corner here. I just got to stand my ground, not move too much. Slowly move her out of the way. I should have got a bigger hook, but I got a short one. Ooh. Ooh, hear that. I'll get her back in this enclosure here. You see, it's like a jungle in here, super humid. I am literally melting at the moment in this room. But she likes like literally almost 100% humidity. Lots of foliage, a couple of nice hiding spots. And um, she's happy as. No. <laughs> Very cage defensive, this snake. Okay, now, snake number two. Whew, I'm sweating. This species, this is actually one of our display snakes, so I just put it in this container to bring it up to show you guys. But it is found naturally occurring places like Costa Rica, all right? And they are stunning. Ooh, really defensive too. <laughs> Called an eyelash wiper. Come on, sweetheart, you know you get? Called an eyelash wiper. And you'll see in a sec, for very obvious reasons, they literally have these scales raised above the eyes there that look like eyelashes, all right? Um, they're highly venomous. They have a massive set of fangs, a great strike, and they don't miss, all right? If you're in that strike zone, boom, game over, all right? You're gonna wear two massive hypodermic needles straight into the India and uh, it'll ruin your day very, very quick, all right? Now, they also, like our death adders in Australia, and there's a few snakes around the world that have this, they've got a caudal lure. So you can see the tip of her tail is a different color. It's an orange little color and it's designed to look like a little grub. These guys are arboreal, they sit up in the trees and they sit there, they curl up and they wiggle that near their face. And out as a bird lands by to try and grab it or a lizard runs over, butchka, just like that. <laughs> Couldn't have timed that any better. They won't hold on, they'll let go. That animal will run off and die pretty quick or the bird will fly another brand, keel over. Ooh, and uh, go and find it, consume it. Now, they don't eat very often this species, maybe 10, 12 times a year, that's it. They're really efficient, all right? Um, but they are responsible for quite a few bites and fatalities each year. Unfortunately, you know, they like to sit about this high above the ground in a bit of foliage and uh, right where people are walking and, and people just wear bites. And um, you know, these developing tropical countries, I've said it before, um, the anti-venom is not readily available. It's super expensive. People can't get access to it or they can't afford it. And uh, yeah, bites are hardcore, super necrotic venom. So this snake's about two years of age now. It's gonna get bigger. They get to almost a meter in length. And yes, at home in the trees. And you can actually see this snake on display in the Lost World of Reptiles here at the park. I'm going to put her away and I'm going to get out our next little fella. Alrighty, have a go at this thing. They are literally like a little landmine. They're called a cantle and they're home to Central America and they are dangerous, highly venomous, super defensive, massive fangs, pit viper. So you've got those heat seeking pits that are just seen in infrared right now. Looking at Chloe in the camera, there'd just be a big red signal that he'd be focused on right now. But if I turn him towards me, he might swing around. He is pretty focused on Chloe right now, though. He will not take his vision off that, okay? Now, like the eyelash viper I just had out. Oh, here we go. Got a caudal lure. But interesting, these guys with their caudal lure, they sit it above their head like this, and they do this. And as lizards or birds come in, boom, they just smack them and uh, let go. Now, the interesting thing with venom is it's used in three ways, right? Defense, securing prey, and it also aids in digestion. So like the eyelash, you'll bite something and let go. The animal will run off. He'll follow a scent trail with his forked tongue because they smell their tongue. They don't smell their nose like we do. So they've got a special organ inside the, the top jaw known as a Jacobson's organ. And as they're flicking the tongue in and out of the mouth, it wipes up above the, the top jaw there, hits that organ, and it'll tell him what he's smelling. 
Um, so yeah, they'll track it down, they'll actually bite it again, load it up with a bit more venom, and uh, that'll actually start to break down that animal and aid in the digestion process. Again, these snakes are responsible for a lot of fatalities every single year. They get to about a meter in length. They're really, really thick. And as you can see, the camouflage, like this guy down on the, on the ground, in amongst a bit of leaf litter, some rocks and so on, you just don't see them, right? And, and the head is literally shaped like a rock. It just sits there and they sit dead still for days, weeks on end. They will not travel around much, right? Like our death adders in Australia, they just sit there and just kill time till it's killing time. Um, and then as an animal comes along, he sits that tail up like this, does this, dun -dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun -dun, and then as it comes in, boom, smacks it, and uh, game over. They won't go to a creek and drink, he'll wait for it to rain, and he'll literally just drink off his own scales. Like he literally has a water droplet to run it off him. And these guys will be in an area where there's wet season and a dry season, like a monsoonal season versus dry season. So he might go three or four or five months without even having a drink and he'd be absolutely fine. All right. So he's only about 12 months of age. Got a lot of growing to do. I'll update you guys as he's grown. He's actually also on display down in the Lost World of Reptiles. So if you want to see him, make sure you come and check him out. I'm going to get out the last one, last of our little exotics. All righty. So... These rattlesnakes make me seriously nervous. Seriously nervous. <laughs> like all these exotics do. I'd much rather tackle taipans and brown snakes any day of the week over these things. Um, look how focused he is on me. Look at that. So at the moment, he's really foody. He thinks I'm gonna feed him, but I'm gonna get him out here. And you can hear, hear that tail. So, he literally uses the tail to let predators, where these guys are, there's a lot of big, heavy hooved animals. He needs to let them know he's there. He doesn't want to get stood on. So he does the rattle, carry on, and uh, any potential predators carries on like that, all right? So it's just a warning. Don't come near me or I'm gonna bite you, all right? They're being quite polite in a way. Don't come near me, mate, or I'll bite you, all right? He's letting you know. Now how the rattler, the actual rattle itself is formed is every time he sheds his skin, another one forms on the end there, right? So they get longer and longer and longer. They seriously end up like this long, and then they end up, they just naturally break a bit off and they just keep on growing. This one's a boy, and I can tell literally by the length of his tail there, all right? And it's nice and thick, because snakes have got two um, wieners, all right? <laughs> they're called hemipenes. And yeah, they've got two of them, so they're packed in the tail there, and that's why it's so thick. Again, huge set of fangs on these, and highly venomous. The Western Diamondback rattlesnake, this one here, it's the second longest growing rattlesnake species and they can get up to two meters in length. They're a live bearing species like most of your vipers and your pit vipers. So mum um, will, will, will go through a cooling period through the winter. They, they, these guys actually den up with other rattlesnakes. And um, then spring will come, mate with a, with a bloke, maybe a couple of blokes if she can. And then um, she'll have a belly full of babies a few months later and uh, they come out, they're literally this big highly venomous, ready to go from day one. They only have a really small rattle when they're born though, all right? So as a few sheds later, it'll start to grow. This one's 18 months of age now, so um, it's about 65 centimeters long, the, the snake. Like this snake's not really that big in the scheme of things, but his fangs are already longer than any of our Australian venomous snakes. So you might've seen on one of my recent Instagram videos, I actually restrained one of these to um, assist it shed, shed the skin that was a bit stuck on it. And I restrained it. And cause their fangs are, you know, the difference between like our lapids, which is our highly venomous snakes in Australia and like a viper or a pit viper, a lapids have fixed front fangs and they're tiny. Vipers are hinged, right? They're in these big sheaths and as they roll forward, they spear out like this and just go boom and they do not miss, all right? If you're in that strike zone, game over. And the bites are nasty, super necrotic and lots of antivenom. You know, if I took a bite from a snake like this, 40, 50 vials of antivenom to save my life. A lot of the time you end up losing digits. Like if I took a hit on the hand, I might lose some fingers and I'd definitely end up with necrosis right up my arm there and they'd have to cut it all out and skin grafts and um, yeah, absolutely disastrous. 
I'd take a bite off a Taipan any day over one of these things, all right? I work with care flight doctors here in Australia on snake bite behavior and, and symptoms and so on. I recently had some care flight doctors come here and one of them had just moved over from the Texas in, in America, which is where you find these things. And he was telling me of a, of a patient that, that he transported and treated who got bitten by an adult Western Dimeback like this, received 83 vials of antivenom, was in hospital for three months skin grafts, lost a couple of digits, where like you can get a type N bite, get a vial or two of antivenom and be out of hospital the next day or two. All right, so yeah, mate, really, really wild. Anyway, so no milkings today, sorry, but um, if you wanna see some more milkings, jump on my Instagram, because I'll be loading them up all week. But next week, I'm gonna keep a bit of a surprise what I'm doing, but uh, another, hopefully, another episode you guys love. For the, the channel, like this is literally, I've only got two episodes up so far. This is number three, the channel's going berserk. Oh, you guys have given us so much support, so I can't thank you enough. So remember, tell your mates, like, share, subscribe, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you for episode number four very soon.